And this right here from Bull Rush, 4570. Because this is the only one I even like this one. He says, I feel like I know more about the host's life more than the Saskas after this interview. Not sure why the other two dudes were there. This is an entirely valid comment. 100% completely unironic. So let's go back to the full face cam here so I can address this. Uh, if you guys have been longtime watchers of Iron Age Nights, you will know that sometimes I can go off the rails and um, I lose it and, and start having more fun with the guests uh, than I, I, I do interviewing them. Right? It happened with the literature devil. Another time that it happened was I, I was not able to give Carol Brown the appropriate interview that she deserved. Um, because she had invited Andrew and the Saska sisters on, uh, my wife was on for that stream as well. And, um, <clears throat> there've been a number of other times that this has absolutely happened. Uh, this is something that I do work on and I try to give the best interviews that I can. I do not mean to overshadow my hosts at all in any way. And this is something I was actually talking, uh, in our private DM chat with like, guys, if I side railed you at all or sidelined you, I guess I should say. Um, that was wrong of me to do, right? Uh, again, I really, really like talking with people. And the problem with doing a multi-hosted stream is my hosts also like talking with people. My co-hosts also like asking questions, okay? And especially when you put me in a live stream with people like the Saska sisters or I was a very big fan of Literature Devil. I ran that one into the ground. Or any other uh, stream where my guests can go as off the rails as I can. Um, I do a massive disservice to my co-hosts. And I believe possibly to the audience as well. A lot of people have said that they really liked the stream. And they thought it was a fun time. Um, however, one thing that we did talk about <clears throat> is that talking about all this personal stuff back and forth between everybody, which, and, and again, if I'm interviewing them, I don't need to go and elaborate on all of my personal stuff life. And it was just fun. Again, I was treating it more like we were just sitting down, just sh shooting the shit instead of an interview, which is what the show is, right? So in another format, it would have been totally okay what happened, but not in the interview format, right? So, uh, sorry, my nose is still a little stuffed up from being sick. Um, and so, but one of the things too that we know, and, and this is something that we do struggle with, is a lot of times, and, and lately, we've been focusing more on the, the who the creator is and less like what the project is and what the artwork is. And part of that, or, or, or like what they're working on currently. And part of that is, is that so many, and not just the Saska sisters because of NDAs and not just anybody else uh, because of legal reasons, but most creators want to talk about their project, but they don't want to give hardly anything away. So that way they can avoid spoilers to entice more people to go and read their stuff. This does make it kind of hard for us as hosts to want to ask these questions um, because oftentimes, and we've we've talked about it and we've experienced it a number of times, it is hard to say, you have this upcoming part of this project coming out. What's the most exciting thing in this? And, and most people won't even talk about a scene in the book. They'll be like, oh dude, there's like this one moment and it's like so good or something like that. It makes it really hard, right? And so me, I, oftentimes I kind of avoid even wanting to talk about it anymore, which leads into the bad part of my personality of talking too much and trying to shoot the shit like we're just sitting at a barbecue or around, you know, a fire or whatever, or just hanging out. And in an interview format, um, that's on me. I, that means that I have failed as a host and I have not appropriately figured out how to ask the questions or how to have our guests be able to talk about their projects in a way 
that doesn't violate NDA or that doesn't violate like their own wanting to protect like their own spoilers. Okay. I mean, I, I can tell you from my perspective, and you guys have heard this from me so many times, and I am in the minority on this, and I know that I am. I don't give two craps about spoilers. I, in fact, think that if you know what's going to happen in a book or a movie or a comic or whatever, and the spoilers ruin that for you, the book itself has no rewatch or, or, or there's no uh, um, revisitability or rewatchability or rereadability, right? Right? Because for me, it's about the execution. If the execution is good, then it doesn't matter about spoilers. But again, I'm in the minority on that. And again, talking with especially, you know, certain guests out there who do want to keep their stuff under wraps because they want people to experience it for the first time. It gets hard. It does. And that leads me into the talking with people and talking about, you know, stories from my past and having a fun time because... Again, conversation will just naturally flow like that. And when it feels like we're blocked off from asking certain questions sometimes, it does get hard in an interview format. That does not excuse my behavior. Um, that only contributes to my, my poor taste as a host and, and, and my poor conversational choices as a host. So, um, yeah. So, Bull Rush, uh, you are 100% correct. 100% correct. I talked way too much about me, my personal experiences. I overshadowed Daniel and Richard on Friday's show. And I, uh, and I think that uh, that is something that I do still work on to this day. Some shows I think I get it right and others I don't. And this Friday was an example of one of those shows I did not get right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, caffeinated wolf hard disagree there's a major difference between experiencing the story in its organic sequential format and getting all of the intended story beats and doing a reread or replay or rewatch uh experiencing for the first time uh if, if you can't experience it and have as much fun with it the second time as you did the first time then it's not good in my opinion or it's it's not as good as it could be right like, I still get as much joy. But again, maybe that's how I'm wired, right? Maybe I'm wired different. Maybe I am, I am, I am able to chemically fire those brain, the, the, the chemicals from my brain differently into my body than other people can, right? But again, I just, that's where I'm at with this. And a lot of people don't like my take on spoilers. It's like, no, if spoilers ruin the book, like, and it's like, oh, well, but I knew the spoiler, so it wasn't good. I'm like, well, then the book wasn't good to begin with. <clears throat> well then if it's not about it enjoying it as much then <laughs> if enjoyment is not a part of rewatchability or rereadability right like i don't know uh yeah i agree yeah i agree with iron age marketing a good story is a good story if you know the ending or not absolutely so but again uh, but, but again, that's uh, uh, all that aside, that's no way to conduct an interview show, right? Th that's no way to do that. Now, that was the point of all of this, right? I threw all of that out there as personal biases of mine that I have in order to tell you guys these are things that I need to get over as a host of a show in order to bring the best show to you that I can. <clears throat> 